everyone. Today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit different. I'm not going to be doing any reviews, but I get a lot of questions about um, new wig wearers and they're asking what I recommend or what seemed to work best for me. What have I learned over the course of so many years of wearing wigs? And I thought I'd put together a little information for you if you're new to wearing alternative hair or you're just curious to see what I have to say. Thank you very much for watching. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, a little bit about me. I started wearing alternative hair about three or four years ago. Um, I am an actress, so I would wear wigs on occasion for parts that I would play. I have always had very fine hair and I started losing my hair about four years ago. Uh, it was very thin and sparse in places and then I would have these times where my head would start being really itchy and burning and then I would lose um, like patches almost of hair. It would just be very sparse uh, around the top of my head and in the back. Uh, so I started wearing alternative hair aka wigs pretty much full time about three years ago and it's not been easy um, because of what I do. It's It was hard kind of coming out of the hair closet because I didn't want it to affect my work. So in choosing a wig that I would wear every day or almost daily, it was a challenge because at the time there were not a lot of resources out there like there are today to help me find my way and figure out what I wanted to do about wearing alternative hair. In my quest, for finding the perfect wig, I bought a lot of hair. And I mean a lot of hair. I would buy all of my wigs online, just from the pictures that I would see. And um, I never really found the right one for me until much later. And it was a lot of trial and error. I now am the proud owner of over 30 some synthetic and human hair pieces uh, that don't really ever get to see the light of day just because they weren't right for me. If you love wearing different looks like I do, it's great. It's awesome to have a bunch of different wigs and different fibers, uh, different colors, different lengths. It's fantastic, but you'll probably want a piece that you can wear every day and be comfortable in it if you suffer from hair loss. So I know it's, it's, it's wonderful and beautiful, isn't it? Oh, gorgeous hair. I have all of this great hair and I don't wear it all the time. And the reason for that is that it's either not very comfortable for me, it's not sized properly, it's not the right fat fiber that I like, it may not have some of the features that I look for in a wig. So hopefully you'll learn from my trial and error and I can help you decide which wig is best for you or at least help guide you to the right one. All right. Okay, so we're gonna get back to it. Things that I would recommend to any first time wig wearer, before you buy a piece, I would really recommend if you have the opportunity and the means to do so, go visit a hair replacement clinic or a salon that specializes in alternative hair. The reason why this is so important is because then you can be properly sized, they can make recommendations based on your lifestyle, it's just a great tool to help you find the right wig instead of doing what I did and purchase a lot of wigs that you never wear. Uh, if you do not have a, like a wig salon or a hair replacement clinic near you, luckily there are a lot of fabulous places online um, such as, uh, I know that I get a lot of my work done through Heart and Hair, which is out in California, and also Hair Solutions by Diana Ford. She does virtual custom work as well. And uh, they can definitely help you customize your piece to make you feel like it's a part of you rather than just something that you're putting on your head like putting on a hat. So that's very important. Number one, the most important thing that you can possibly do is measure your head correctly. 
I can put a link on here for you and that will show you how to properly size your noggin. The reason why you want to properly size your head is that an ill-fitting wig is going to be very uncomfortable. It could slide around or be too tight and you won't end up wearing it, just being honest. Um, something else, number two, what's very important to look at is your lifestyle. Your lifestyle is going to determine pretty much the hair fiber that you're going to go with, whether it's going to be human hair or synthetic or heat friendly fibers. Uh, are you really busy? Do you not have time to do your hair and to take all of the steps that it takes to care for a human hair wig? A synthetic wig might be right for you just because they're low maintenance very easy to care for and they're already styled for you so you just put it on and go or after you wash it and you let it dry the style comes right back the curl comes back if there's curl in there it's a beautiful thing and a great time saver i personally prefer human hair and this is why i'm not jumping off of the synthetic bandwagon okay because synthetic is wonderful i have tried both and my take on it is this. Synthetic is great if you're busy, you don't have a lot of time to spend on your hair, and you would like a more affordable option for wearing alternative hair, okay? Human hair, it feels more like your own bio hair, and it's very easy to style. You can curl it, you can style it just as if you would your own bio hair. Um, but it's very, very time consuming and it's an initial investment that can be quite costly uh, just because a good quality human hair wig is going to run you at least $1,000 with most manufacturers. And like I said, a good quality piece. Now they make um, more inexpensive human hair options out there, which are totally fine if that's what your budget is. But remember, the better the quality hair, the longer it's going to last you. If you're a first time wig wearer, you're thinking about buying your first wig, synthetic, you can't go wrong with it. Um, but if you're wanting one specific piece that you are going to wear every single day and you want it to be most like your bio hair, you want to be able to curl it or to straighten it to wear it different ways, then human hair might be the right option for you. Knowing then what I know now, I would have done things a lot differently. I prefer human hair just because it gives me a lot more styling options and it feels more like my bio hair used to. I also prefer a hand tied cap. A hand tied cap is going to give you a lot more natural movement and um, I'll show you here this, I'm wearing the Blake by John Renault in Palm Springs Blonde, but this is the cap of a hand tie cap. So when, you know, say you get hit by a strong gust of wind, you're not going to see wefts and you can style a hand tie cap any which way you want to. You can braid it, you can pull it up you're not going to see the wefting. It's going to look more like your own scalp when you style it. I prefer a lace front. Lace front to me is key. All of my wigs are lace front and that's where you're going to get the most natural looking hairline. I also love to have a monofilament top. You can get a monofilament part, which just means that it's parted right here and it looks more like your scalp because they're hand tied in that area or a monofilament top, which means the entire top of the wig is hand tied and you can part it in any direction. Uh, why are these things important to me? Well, with uh, my line of work, as I mentioned, I'm an actress. I need to be able to have hair that is very versatile. I'm going to need to be able to style it a number of different ways. I'm going to need to be able to braid it and curl it and straighten it and wear it up, wear it down, uh, whatever the role calls for when the hair and makeup people are working on my hair. So for me, that's 
kind of imperative that I have a hand tied cap, lace front, a monofilament top, and human hair for those reasons. Um, and also too, for me personally, I feel that this is going to give you the most natural look. The next thing I'd like to talk about is customization. Customization changed my entire world. I was one of those people that would take the wig right out of the box, throw it on my head, and it would either look really good or really bad. Uh, but it, it never felt like me. It just didn't feel like it was my own hair. And that was really important to me. So I was introduced to customization uh, by a hair by Diana Ford. I sent her this wig. Again, this is the Blake and Palm Springs Blonde. And the Blake comes out of the box straight as a board. Uh, it's all one length. It's absolutely beautiful. But as I mentioned before, I've always had very fine, thin hair and it just felt like so much hair to me. Uh, it, it just didn't feel natural. And the cap was too big. I wasn't really a huge fan of the color. I wanted more depth and tone to it. And I, I wanted some extra things that made it look real, like baby hairs around my forehead and the sides and along the nape, so that way I could pull it back and you wouldn't be able to see the sides here. So Diana had cut it and trimmed it for me to give me those features and she also colored it for me. Getting it customized literally changed my world when it came to alternative hair. So let's get to the good stuff. You're like, Carrie, we've been listening to you ramble on for like 10 minutes. Can you just get to the point and tell us what you recommend? Well, y'all, I wish that I could give you a straight answer because it really just depends on you, okay? Your lifestyle, your preferences, how you're gonna be wearing it. Are you gonna be wearing it every day? Uh, do you have a, just a special occasion that you'll be wearing it to? There's a lot of different factors, okay? So generally speaking, if you're a super active person and you don't really have sensitive skin, whether you've got hair or no hair, you just wanna have your hair look great in a couple of seconds by putting it on and then going, synthetic is awesome. That is a great way to go. If you're between sizes, between petite and average, or or you know, you're on the smaller size of an average, or you're on the little bit larger than an average, I recommend a hand tied cap. Uh, the hand tied cap's got some stretch, it's gonna move with you, it's got a lot of great styling options. Lace front, oh my gosh, guys. I cannot live without a lace front, okay? John Renault makes the best lace. It's a welded lace. So when you look at it, it's kind of got a hashtag or crisscross pattern to it that makes it very strong and very durable, and it comes pre-cut. So you never have to worry about trimming your lace. And if you do want to trim it back a little bit, you can, but don't trim too much because it will affect how it lays on your head. So that's a tip for you. Uh, other than the hand tied cap, I have to have a monofilament top because I like to change up my parts. I like to pull my hair back and you know, you don't want to have that part just staying there the whole time. You want to be able to you know, brush it back and pull your hair in a ponytail or pull it up on the top of your head, whatever you want to do. So styling versatility is definitely a must for me. So if you ask me, Hey Kara, if I'm like you, I'm kind of busy, but I got time to do my hair. I want it to look as natural as possible. I want it to feel like my own bio hair, and I don't want to waste my money on getting a bunch of different wigs that I may not be happy with. What do you recommend to me? Well, I just so happen to have it right here. This is the John Renault Gwyneth wig. I have only taken her out of the box to try her on, so this is pretty much how she comes out of the box. You want to do a check wash, by the way, when you first get your human hair to make sure that the hair fibers are, are straight and they're not real frizzy. That way you can tell that the wig um, the cuticle is all going in the same direction and that there's no problems with it. Talking about the Gwyneth here, why I recommend the Gwyneth. She is a nice mid-length style, so she is not gonna to be too hard to manage. It's 
going to be a nice length for you, but it's not going to be so long that you feel like it's you're just out of control with all this hair. As far as recommending length, again, this is personal preference. I love me some long hair, but I have never really had super long hair like the Kim, uh, even the Blake that I have on right now, my hair never looked like this. I could get it this long, but it was a thin garbagey mess. So when I first got my Blake, I really didn't know what to do with it. I just kept her straight. I was afraid to curl her. I was afraid to do anything to her. Uh, so if you're not used to having super long hair, you might wanna try a mid-length or a shorter piece. Getting back to Gwyneth here, she has a lace front, a monofilament top. So again, you can part it in any direction. She has a hand tied cap, which is the one I was telling you about. This is going to offer you the most comfortable hair wearing experience because it will stretch to fit your head. Here is the hand tied section in the back and on the top. So it's hand tied everywhere. You have your adjustment straps in the back and these are Velcro. So if you're wearing it, you're like, ah, oh, it feels a little loose. You can discreetly pick it up under here, move it, and you don't have to worry about taking your wig off, which is fantastic. I don't know if you've seen any of the ones out there, but they have those little notches like a bra clip, horrible. You have to take your wig off to readjust it and you gotta run to the bathroom and take your wig off. It can be embarrassing. So that's why I like the Velcro. But it's beautiful, gorgeous hair. This is Palm Springs Blonde. It is a rooted color. When selecting color for your first wig, I would really recommend that you go with the color that's closest to your natural hair color. That way you don't freak out when you get it and be like, oh, I was a blonde. I don't know if I can get used to this brunette. Stick with the color closest to your hair, at least for your first wig. When you feel brave later on, then go for it and get a different color. But if you're not 100% positive about switching up to a totally different color, get something close to your natural hair color. Something else that I highly recommend that all of my wigs have is a rooted, uh, a rooted color. Rooting, isn't it funny that when we have bio hair, we go to the salon to get our roots touched up, but rooting makes your hair look more natural on a wig. So although I never liked my roots to show on my bio hair, I have to have a rooted color. If you wanna check out the rooted colors, I would also recommend going with a rooted color that's similar to your eyebrows or the eyebrow pencil that you're going to use. Um, I'm wearing a medium brown eyebrow pencil right now and that seems to go with all of the blondes and even some of the brunettes. This is the Gwyneth right out of the box. The bottom will be rolled up in literally what looks like a giant toilet paper holder that gives you this little curler flip on the bottom. Now, this is not permanent. You can straighten it out, you can curl it out. It's just the way it's packaged in the box. So if you don't like that curl at the bottom, then you can always change it. Let's see if I can turn around for you. She's a really great length. Uh, the nice thing about this particular length is it's long enough to be feminine. It's long enough to do different styles with it. You can pull it up, you can pull it back, you can have it down, you can curl it, you can wear it straight. It's just, to me, it's the perfect length for a first time wig wear. It's very easy to manage. Here is the lace front. The ear tab area. And this is an average. So even though I am between sizes, it still fits me really well. I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this today. If you have any questions regarding 
this video or just general questions about alternative hair, I'm happy to help you. You can leave in comments below or you can send me a direct message. Thank you very much for watching everyone and have a great day.